Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brett with American Revival Crafts. Today we're going to be talking about 10 things that I wish I knew before I got my laser. Stick around. Number 10 on the list is a camera setup. Now, this was never something that I thought I would need or want on a laser. I thought it was fine, just use the red dot, frame. That's what I was used to doing on my diode laser. I had no issues with that. But now that I have the camera set up, the Lightbring camera specifically for this Monport CO2 laser, I can't live without it. It is awesome. The ability to line up and utilize scrap pieces is just great. And I use it on every job now. Every single project I start with taking a picture of the bed and aligning my projects and it works out perfect every time. Going through the setup is really easy and it makes getting it dialed in simple and it's extremely accurate. I can't believe it. For just a small investment of about $150, $160 I think total is what I paid to get this up and running. It has made our jobs completely better. And if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my video on how to set up and install your Lightburn camera. I go over everything from where to place the camera and how to go through the setup process in Lightburn to make it completely simple. Tip number nine, upgrade your air assist. The air assist that comes on this laser is fine. It works good, but the only problem with it is that it's not adjustable and it's running all the time, constantly. It's always on. So once I upgraded my air assist, I was able to control air assist in light burn, and I'm also able to turn it up and down depending on what I'm doing. Having air assist that you're able to turn up and down depending on your needs will drastically increase not only the speed at which you cut, but the thickness of what you can cut. Upgrading the air assist on my laser was the first thing I did. I do not regret doing it. Number eight is to make sure that your laser is in focus. So this tip is extremely important because if your laser is not in focus, it will not cut, it will not engrave the way that it's supposed to. And you'll be pounding yourself in the head wondering like, why isn't this cutting when it should be? And it's because it's out of focus. So your laser manufacturer will tell you what lens is installed in your machine. But if you don't know, what you need to do is do a ramp test. And I'll link to a few different videos here on how to do that. And that'll help you determine what your focus is. For me, focusing the lens wasn't the hard part. The, what the hard part was is making sure that your material is flat down on the bed throughout the whole span of the bed so your laser doesn't come in and out of focus depending on what level your material is set at. So to help with that issue, what you wanna make sure is you wanna make sure that your material is as flat as it can be. If it is bowed, like a lot of quarter inch, eighth inch plywood can be, it, it's just gonna happen. You wanna make sure you pin down your material, use magnets, use wooden pins or plastic pins. That way you can make sure that your focus is the same throughout the whole entire board. Tip number seven, when you need to glue down intricate or small parts, use double-sided adhesive tape on the back of your wood before you cut the parts out. This will make it extremely easy to attach those pieces to your substrate after you're done cutting them out instead of trying to intricately applying super glue or wood glue or any whatever type of glue to the back of the piece and then have to stick the piece onto your backer and avoid squeeze out, all that stuff. Even though it's a little bit of a tedious job to peel the adhesive backing off of the double-sided tape, it's still a lot better than trying to have to mess around with glue. Tip number six is similar to tip number seven, but with a small change. So again, instead of using glue to tediously apply small pieces or even large pieces for that matter, use spray adhesive on the back of your pieces after you cut them out. What using spray glue is gonna do, it's gonna allow you to place a nice film of glue on the back of your part, whether it's big or small, and you'll have no squeeze out at all. Spray adhesive is extremely durable. It's easy to apply. I've tried to pull this off during testing and it actually rips the whole wood apart before it actually comes off. So it's very strong. Some of the brands we like to use are Gorilla Glue Adhesive and also Super 77 by 3M. Just make sure to apply the glue at a 90 degree angle so it doesn't get on the sides of the board. But honestly, even if it does get on the sides, you can't even see it anyway. It hides really well. Tip number five, plywood will vary. Know it, accept it. Even if you're getting plywood from the same manufacturer or same supplier, depending on the sheets that you get, they're all gonna be a little bit different, especially if you go mixing uh, suppliers or manufacturers. 
All plywood is not created equal. There's a lot of different grades of it, but the bottom line is it all has varying thicknesses, a varying amount of voids inside of the plywood, and varying types of glue that connect all of the layers together. And all of those different variables are going to affect how it cuts, except that you will have some failures in cutting if you run into a void in the middle of a board, or if you run into a knot in one of the layers, or a a glue pocket in one of the layers, sometimes that will happen with plywood. Plywood will also vary in thickness. Where I buy my plywood, it's advertised as a quarter inch and also four millimeters. Now, these pieces will vary anywhere from four millimeters to four and a half millimeters once I measure it with calipers. So normally this isn't a big deal when you're cutting or engraving, especially it's not a big deal, but if you're trying to do joinery, like make boxes or different parts that clip together with a slot and a groove, then it'll make a huge difference. If you're setting your, your slot at four and a half millimeters, but your wood is actually four millimeters, it's gonna be really loose. So you have to double check that every time you start a new project. And once you find a good material, stick with it. Another tip that I can give when you're actually picking out your material, what I'll do is I'll take the piece of plywood and I'll hold it up to the light and I'll see if I can see any voids shining through the plies. And a lot of times you can, and it's unavoidable. Most plywood is gonna have some sort of voids in it, but I wanna pick the piece that have the smallest amount of voids as possible. But also what I'll do is I'll do the same process when I'm starting a project in my shop and I'll actually mark where the voids are on the board so I can make sure to avoid and cut around them when I'm actually running the project. Tip number four relates to tip number five also and it is to make sure that you cut all the way through your material before you move it on the work bed. What I mean is after you're done running a cut job, slowly without moving the overall piece of wood, kind of try to lift up the edges a little bit with a, with a razor blade or with your fingers without moving the overall piece of the board. That way, in case you hit a glue pocket or a knot or something that you didn't expect in the wood and it didn't cut all the way through, at least you'll be able to run the job a second time and you can save the piece. This is another reason why it's really important to either pin down or magnet down the exterior of your pieces, not only so that it's flat and you can get the correct focus over the entire piece, but also so you can kind of try to lift up your pieces just to make sure that they cut all the way through and it will not move the entire work piece. Tip number three is to make sure to preview your job in Lightburn before you run it. You can see in this example here of my logo, if I select everything and I hit the preview button, this is going to fill the way that I want it. But with one small change, with the deletion of one exterior line, Lightburn is going to do something completely different. This preview shows the entire perimeter of all the circles being engraved just because I deleted one extra line. So it's extremely important just to take a few minutes or less before you run a project and do a preview to make sure the job is going to run the way that you expect it to run. Laser tip number two, the importance of maintenance. I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that you keep these machines maintained. So that includes cleaning the lens, and cleaning the mirrors and making sure that the machine is lubricated and generally clean are the main things that you need to worry about. Now, the biggest things I wanna talk about during maintenance is cleaning the lens and the mirrors and also making sure that the mirrors are aligned properly. Those are the biggest things that will affect the quality of your cuts and will kill the power of your machine and you'll be scratching your head wondering why is this thing not cutting? If you're interested, I have a whole video on how to tune up your laser, but the one thing I wanna say here is to just make sure you have a schedule. After every time, every day that we use this laser, I go through and clean the lens and make sure that the mirrors are clean. About every three, four days, or maybe once a week, I will verify the mirror alignment by running a quick test, and I'll adjust it if it needs to be adjusted. Now. These machines are incredibly durable, but they do move back and forth rapidly and for a long period of time, and that could kind of misalign the mirrors or any of their parts in the system. So they all need to be checked. Okay, so this brings us to the number one thing that I wish I knew before I got my laser, and that is mistakes will happen. You will mess things up. You will ruin jobs. You will ruin pieces of material. It's all part of the game. You're gonna forget to turn on your air assist. 
you're gonna forget to set your focus, you're gonna have a magnet in the way that your machine crashes into, it's all gonna happen, so don't worry about it. Take it as a learning experience. But hopefully after listening to these 10 things that I wish I knew before I got my laser, it will help better prepare you if you're either thinking about buying a laser or you just started with laser engraving and cutting. Well, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please give the video a like and a thumbs up. And if you really like the content, I ask that you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more videos being planned, not just on laser engraving, but also on CNC's and woodworking in general. But let's keep the conversation going. If you have a tip or trick or something that you wish that you knew before you got your laser, leave it in the comments below and we'll talk about it. Thanks a lot and thanks for watching. See you on the next one.